John Connor. It is time. There's a new Terminator. The TX. It is designed for extreme combat. It's faster, more intelligent, and more powerful. It has been programmed to destroy other cybernetic organisms. It was sent back through time for one purpose only. To kill us all. Welcome back to another episode of Front Row Cinema, a movie podcast for movie lovers by movie lovers. I am your host, TJ Tromboli, and with me, as always, my co-host. I got Cyberdyne model TX in the house tonight. Uh, she's gracing us under her pseudonym, Mr. James O'Reilly, while she hunts for John Connor. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. That's right. And I've come back through time to kill you all. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm not doing anything for the resistance. So I've been spared the wrath this week while we take a look at my 1000 movies that I've seen in theaters. And we see how well it's aged along with the hype surrounding the film, its box office analysis and legacy in the film industry. So if you enjoy this kind of content, hit that sub button on YouTube, leave that five star review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's how you help the channel grow. Jim, what are we watching tonight? We're watching Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. That's right. 2003's sci-fi action bonanza. Directed by Jonathan Mostow, written by John Brancato and Michael Ferris, and starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, Nick Stahl, and Claire Danes. Uh, Now, I know you were bummed out last week, Jim, but don't worry. The DVD cover has made its return because, of course, I have the Terminator movies on physical media. How could you not? Uh, I do have to say, though, whoever Actually, pretty easy. I just never bought them. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, though, Jim, whoever crafted the Terminator 3 DVD probably should be fired because this might have one of the all time worst log lines I've ever seen for a DVD copy. And it reads. Arnold Schwarzenegger is back as a time-traveling T-101 Terminator in this smash hit directed by Jonathan Mostow. Wow. Whoa. Oh, my God. That was the best one yet, dude. That was my favorite one ever. I got You got up to the part where I usually start to zone out, and then it was over. <laughs> all right. What's the movie about, DVD? Don't worry about it. Arnold's in it. We got Jonathan Mossed yeah. out. Yeah, it's all it's you like, need. Yeah, it's like Terminator. It's always traveling through time. You know what it is. Come on. <laughs> the third time, bro. We really got to go over this again? Like, you know why you're here. Yeah. Just absolutely hilarious right there that's that's picture perfect uh pure amazing right there did you see this movie in theaters uh no i definitely didn't see this in theaters this this was one i would have like rented this would have been like a friday night like total video rental Ooh, total video night deep cut right there nice uh were you big into the terminator franchise i really liked the first two movies and <laughs> that is that is what i will say this actually this might be the movie where I started to be like, eh, maybe I don't need to see the next one, you know? Like, maybe I can just <laughs> kind of skip it when those come out in theaters. Like, you know, as good as it sounds, maybe just don't go. Finally broke the wheel for you. Yeah, this, yeah, because right now they were two for two. So there was no reason to believe that, that we weren't going to get another slam dunk. Yeah, uh, two for two and like on the rise, you know? Terminator 2 is still one of my favorite action movies. Yeah, probably one of the best action movies ever made still to this day. Uh, so, yeah, so the, the sky was the limit with this bad boy coming up. Had a great trailer. Uh, the, the hype was there where everybody was pumped. Arnold Schwarzenegger back as T-101. Like, yeah, ass in the seat. Let's go. And little did we know uh, what was awaiting us. I actually have a funny, uh, n- not to get too ahead of ourselves. I will. I do want to read this one review because it ties in to the hope that we are having right now where Terminator 3 is about to come out, and we're all super excited and hope that it's going to be good. So Uh, this review actually was not for Terminator 3. It's a review that somebody wrote for 28 Days Later. And I only saw it because I just recently watched 28 Days Later because I wanted to rewatch this movie again. And this has probably one of the greatest. This was a one-star review on IMDb for 28 Days Later. And so this person writes, I was ripped off 
This isn't this movie's not scary. It never really even became a zombie movie. I don't know what the critics were looking for, but the crowd at the movie were not happy. I've seen two movies this summer, The Hulk and now this piece of garbage. My fingers are crossed for T3. <laughs> oh, Dude, what a tragedy. <laughs> he wrote like... this. He wrote this on June 28th, 2003. <laughs> Just dripping with dramatic irony. Like that guy's going to hate T3. <laughs> This poor bastard did not know the writing on the wall. <laughs> yeah, although, do you think it's a troll? Do you think he already knows T3 is going to be bad? And he's like, yeah, that'll get him. That's the perfect way to end this comment. <laughs> oh, I, I, I think this might be a real dude. Because it, it shows for IMDb, like, the day they wrote the review. He wrote this review on June 28, 2003. This T3 hadn't come out yet. No, I know, but you could have guessed, like, that it was not going to be that good. He, he right? could have, like, but I... I guess the optimist in me wants to believe that this man was holding out hope. Yeah. So you're taking you're taking Chud because that's like he's very much like a like a 2003 Chud, right? Like that's yeah. like you can see the beginnings of what they will become. What they will become. Yeah, hating on 28 days later, they're not even real zombies. <laughs> yeah. He was the makings of the Chud, but I I found that review very funny because much like us at this moment in time, we we're, we're hopeful for T3 to be the movie that we want it to be. And uh, whether it was going to be remained to be the question at that point. Uh, but that sure as shit got asses in the seats. Everybody, much like us, was hoping beyond hope that we had another hit on our hands. So let's drive in, dive into some numbers, Jim. Let's hear those good, juicy numbers. Number, dates, and numbers, numbers, dates, array, dates, numbers. Show me the money. So Terminator Three Rise of the Machines opens against a two hundred million dollar budget the weekend budget. of July fourth. July fourth movie. Which just give me one second here because I'm also gonna bring up some daily totals. Ooh, ooh. what a July fourth movie! The end of the world. Yeah, seriously. Um, but yeah, it gets a $200 million budget. It opens number one with $44 million. We're still on the low end, though, especially for when, you know, we talk about Terminator 2 being one of the best action movies of all time, making a stonking load of money. Uh, yeah. This movie, built in franchise, still coming in somewhere around in the middle. That 44 is good enough to put it in the number 19 spot just behind The Fellowship of the Ring, which did 47.2, but ahead of Scary Movies, 42.3. Yeah, so like... And I know this is also an asterisk because it's a five-day weekend, obviously. Right, like it makes 23, like 24 and change the first, like on July 2nd and July 3rd, you know what I mean? So like... Yeah, it's got a good lead. None of that's counting toward the weekend. Yeah. So what's So what's our five-day then? Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, you're going to make me do math. Um, hold on, let me bust out the old calculator. Well, that, all right, so we did a 44 opening, and that's, you said what? It was an extra 20 something? It was an extra like 12.4 million on the just the second, and then 11.9 million on the third. So, so it's like, like an extra like 20. 24.3 ish. Like 72. 73 around yeah somewhere around there but like yeah, like there. it's not it's the low 70s like, it's not that bad is what i'm trying to say it's not a great five-day weekend either but it's not like a 40 million dollar opening you're leaving a lot of money in those first two days yeah no definitely and it's still it's a it's a big win for r-rated movies that's still the fifth best opening weekend for an r-rated film uh, it's the fourth highest 4th of July opening. This one was a funny one. So the top three 4th of July openings at this point, Terminator 3 is going to take number four. The top three, all Will Smith movies, Men in Black 1 and 2 and Independence Day. Yeah. Makes that sense. man owned 4th of July. Yeah. Well, the, and that was like right in the middle of his like every movie he had like open number one for like 15 years. You know what I mean? Like he was the um, king of the box office. So yeah, but so sticking with Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines though. I will always say the top subtitle every time Absolutely. now. Yeah, you you it give it. that give that honorific um, right there. It beats out 
Coming in second place, another notable opening, Legally Blonde 2, Red, White, and Blonde. And we're having a real theme here the last couple of weeks of very disappointing sequels. Yeah, yeah, that is certainly top of the charts when you want to talk about a disappointing sequel. Yeah, well, maybe not top of the charts, because we talked about this last week. Coming in third place that week in its second weekend, Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. <laughs> <laughs> A 62.8% drop down to 14 million. Oh, that sounds about right. It's funny how everyone loves to talk today about this the the sequel for fatigue and how bad the sequels are. You know, come come live in the summer of 2003. I got I got something to say for you. Yeah, I mean we right, through the some top pretty... three movies are all like giant sequels, yeah. And, and then very I mean, the other ones mediocre. Are Coming, you got Finding Nemo is the only original movie in the top five because in fifth place is Hulk, which is a comic book adaptation. Oh, <laughs> which, oh man, the history history is a flat circle. Um, <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I mean, there's Sinbad Legend of the Seven Seas is like sixth place, which I think is another animated movie. Oh, the Italian job was a remake too. Yeah, it's oh, down yeah, here yeah. in like eighth. Too Fast, Too Furious is a sequel. The top 10, a lot of sequels and comic book movies going on. So yeah, maybe maybe we're not so different, you and I, 2003. <laughs> 20 years later, we've never learned our lesson. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I don't know. I think I, I've learned it by now. I don't know about <laughs> everybody else, but I've definitely learned it. Um, so yeah, moving on to weekend two, Terminator drops fifty five point eight percent down to third place for nineteen point five million, and it's gonna lose. That's All right, a pretty big drop. It's gonna fall in third behind two movies that are opening this weekend. I saw both of these movies in theaters, and I am very sure of what the one you saw will be. <laughs> so I am gonna say that our next movie is going to be the first Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. You're goddamn right, Jim. Of course. You think I'm going to miss a Pirates movie in theaters? Yeah. Well, so today, I not, today, maybe. I will not say the total for that movie. We'll hold that one uh, back. Uh, but coming in second, a movie I definitely saw in theaters. I vividly remember seeing this movie, and I still kind of like this movie to this day. Uh, with 23 million, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, yeah, that was a movie, all right. Did you, you didn't see that in theaters, right? No, no, I didn't. Yeah, Thank this you. was, man, this might be the peak of my movie going career, honestly, because I definitely saw League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, definitely saw Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, I definitely saw Charlie's Angels full throttle. <laughs> Summer for you right there. To think, Jim, that there was once a world where the box office prediction people were saying League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was going to blow pirates out of the water. Yeah, that's, I mean, Sean Connery was in it. And this was, you got to remember, I mean, we'll talk more about it when we do that episode. Because there's, this is like, pirate movies were like the a curse in Hollywood yes. at that point. Yeah. Nobody wanted to be the one to be like, yeah, that pirate movie is going to be great. Because <laughs> then when it yeah. wasn't, people would be like, the fucking pirate movie? Are you kidding me? Like, what are you thinking? On Cutthroat Island. Um, weekend 3 of Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. It falls another 52.1% down to 4th place. Damn, dude, these are big 9. drops. 9.3 million. That's two 50 plus drops week over week. Yeah, well, it's it just, it's because we're in the thick of it now, right? This is like July 18th to the 20th. So, like, I don't know if you saw this movie, but Bad Boys 2 is coming out this weekend. Oh, oh not in theaters, at least. You still have Pirates, which is, like, obviously going to be a smash hit, right? League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I mean, come on, everybody was seeing that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that movie like, was famous not... for its box office. It's got stiff competition, and like week three at this point, you're already getting a little long in the tooth when all the big yeah. movies are coming out every week. And you it, know? it also doesn't help that Pirates becomes an absolute sensation in July and just takes the heat out of everything. Right, exactly. Which Pirates, I mean, was, was I remember that was the dopest movie ever when I saw it. We gotta stop talking about it because we're gonna do it in like <laughs> two episodes. Uh, <laughs> 
going into weekend four, Terminator falls down to seventh place with five million. And Oof. let's just write it out of the top ten. Oof. It's going to come in. Oof. You might only have at least one more, I'm thinking. Yeah, maybe one more. Let's see. Weekend. What would we just do? Five? You're up to weekend five, I think. Okay, so weekend five, it comes in tenth. <laughs> just a shade under three million. Holding on by a prayer. Weekend six, it comes in tenth. Jesus, hold the line. With one point six million, and then finally in weekend seven, um, it drops down below a million dollars into sixteenth place. Oh, what a shame! Uh, so six weeks joining a few other movies. Uh, like I don't know if this is the, the movies that it wants to be in contention with. Uh, he joins other notable movies like Shallow How, Spy Kids Two, and Holes. Wow! Yeah. Great company. <laughs> and then just to finish it off with some totals. Now, this is this is an interesting one, right? So domestic, it finishes with 150.3 million. And internationally, we were just saying last week how funny it was that Dumb and Dumber only got $294. <laughs> which was just what was pretty classic but like there is an international market though right don't look too much into it because terminator 3 pulls in 283 million internationally wow so it does better than the domestic yeah for a worldwide total of 433 like let's call it 0.4 million yeah so still 433.4 good enough to put us in the number 16th spot just behind the mummy returns with 435 and just ahead of Castaway's 429.6. Uh, definitely a huge drop, though, from Terminator 2, which I believe Terminator 2 made. If I Let me look. Let's let's get that number up very quickly. I think Terminator 2 did almost $900 million. Yeah, let me pull it up really fast. I mean, I wouldn't... Be Wrong. It's not even, I'm not even close. Like... I'm, not, I'm not even close to that. Uh, so... I mean, maybe if you adjust for inflation. So the box office for Terminator 2 was 520.9. So actually closer than I would have guessed it. Does it have a budget listed there, though? A budget uh, was 102, 102 million for Terminator 2. Right. So you you only you made 500 million, which was more, and you, you made it for half the amount of money. You know what I mean? Like, it's way bigger success. Definitely. But I mean, it's still... It still ends up being the seventh highest grossing movie worldwide and the eighth highest grossing domestic. So not nearly as bad as other Terminator sequels will go on to be. I mean, yeah, that's and that's like kind of I'm glad you said that because that's kind of my big takeaway from this is like when I first saw this movie in 2003, I was like, man, that movie was horrible. Like, why would they ever do that to Terminator? I can't believe they did that. I'm kind of bummed out right little did you know and yeah it's like there's no way they could do anything worse than that right <laughs> like and then and then i remember we saw the the christian bale one at some point yep. um and i did not like that one too much either and then i know they fell off the rails like way more after that right yep then they did genesis so, which going, even oof. this was an interesting one to go back to because it's like it's not that bad, right? Like, what did you think of this? I didn't think it was that bad. Yeah, no, compared to it, it comparative to what we've gotten since then, it's night and day. Um, and it's it's yeah, it's not it's not a bad movie. And reception wise, it didn't do too bad either. It's definitely middle of the road. Uh, critics gave this movie a seventy. For the Rotten Tomatoes audience actually a 46 so critics were actually more in on this movie than the audience was uh 6.3 about middle of the road on IMDb and a B plus cinema score there Jim wow B plus pretty terrible as, as cinema scores go but... yeah, as far as far as cinema scores go I mean, okay. like, if you're not getting an A minus what yeah. are you even doing yeah. yeah if you're not in that A range like you're you're a DOA at that point you're just you don't even have a shot um but yeah, this movie is is a solid movie. Uh, and I think watching it now, 
I feel more frustrated than I did back then watching it because this is a good movie that should be great. There's the ingredients in this movie to be great, but they make some weird choices throughout this movie that every time I'm like really settling in and getting in on it, that managed to just suck me back out of it. And I'm like, oh, come on. Why, why are you going to do that? Yeah. Like, and one of the, one of the things, and I feel this is one that they did because they had to a want to tie it back into something that Terminator two did, but also B be like, Hey, it's been however many years since we made the last one. We got to bring people up to speed. What do we do? Let, why don't we do like a 10 minute voiceover that brings everybody up to like where we are now. And it's like, no fucking don't yeah. fucking do that. But like the, the whole opening. Thing. I hate I hate the whole opening. The movie should start when the female Terminator shows up, and that's it. Like everything before that, I hate. I hate. I hated it. I hated it. No, I, I need that, to know. I need to know that he's off the grid, and I need to know why he's off the grid, man. I need to know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't need any of that. Yeah, he's just like riding then. through the dark in a, on a motorcycle, and he's like, "They tra- They came from my mother when I was a child." Then they came for me. It's like, dude, stop. Yeah. Just stop, dude. This is this dialogue is atrocious. It's so bad, yeah. I mean, like, the opening voiceover is pretty rough. And it's like, we've talked about voiceovers in movies a couple times, like, where I think the only way it really works is if it's something that stays consistent throughout the movie and, like, consistently brings value to my experience. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, if your movie just starts with, like, five minutes of voiceover, it's just very clear to me that you saw a cut of it and were like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, we need to, like, say what's going on. Like, people don't get it, you know? And that definitely feels it in this one, where they're just trying to bring us up to speed. And I don't need to be brought up to speed. I, I know what's happening. Two Terminators are going to come back. One's going to try and kill them. One's going to try and save them. Like, let's fucking go. Yeah, and I mean, I know, like, it's been a long time since terminator 2 came out right because what is that movie 91 in 91 92 and this is 03 so a little over 10 years yeah, still so like people that are coming to this movie but know then, what yeah, the like, fuck is up like everybody's seen terminator 2 right like nobody needs to like get caught up like this that. is the third one like people coming to this movie know what's happening we, we know what's going to happen terminators are coming back they're going to try and kill john connor he's got to not die like we got yeah, it Let's, like just Terminator, you get it. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, I like, and it's, it's a shame because there's so there's a lot of stuff in this movie that I do like that I did. I love the idea that they do a female Terminator, uh, because she has like, especially with you know females have such a way of blending in better. Like, yeah, that scene like where she gets pulled over, like the cop pulls her over, and it's like, oh yeah, like a like a female is tailor made to getting out of a ticket or whatever, like so, stuff so like that. Two thousand and three, though, it like, is so two thousand and three. Like, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, she makes like the boobs like get bigger and everything, but it works. Like it makes sense. Like yeah, of course, the Terminator is going to use everything at its disposal. I get that. I can fuck with that. Let's go. And it's different enough from the other movies that they haven't done before to let them kind of be like that wolf out in the open, the wolf in yeah. sheep's clothing. So here's my problem with that stuff specifically, though, right? Like, Mm -hmm. in the first two movies, the Terminator isn't very stealthy. Like, I guess maybe in the second one, he's a little more so. But he's, for the most part, not trying to trick anybody. He's just murdering everybody. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, he's pretty, he's stealthy up until he finds John Connor. Then he just kind of goes haywire. But until he found John Connor, he, like, the only person he killed was that cop. And then he was using the cop to get around everywhere oh, yeah, that's the under the radar right. yeah yeah the but then once you saw john connor then like his programming sarah connor's yeah so maybe it's yeah. a little different yeah so like that makes sense in this one um you know that they would use that dis- and that she, does, their... she does end up killing the cop too right like she doesn't just it like cuts... get out of the ticket and drive away right well she sees she just goes i like i like that gun and then it cuts away and it's like that i was stupid it's like why why wouldn't you just be the ter- like it's like why yeah, like and it's stuff terrible. like that because like they have the ingredients for a great scene yeah. but then they just take the like the 2003 route through it yeah and i mean i don't need i i this is pretty nitpicky but also like i think they went too far giving her like an arm cannon <laughs> you know oh, no I mean? yeah like, yep i also agree and it, like, it's and it's it was a bit much because then like why if you had a badass like arm cannon why would you ever be firing like a police issue gun at somebody <laughs> you know what i mean like your arm turns into a giant cannon like who cares about that other thing 
And clearly, like, she can cycle through different weapons within it because once the arm cannon gets damaged, she changes it to, like, a flamethrower. So yeah, at the same yeah. time, when she, it's weird that they give her the arm cannon, but the only thing the arm cannon really did was just kind of, like, short-circuit Arnold Schwarzenegger for, like, five seconds when she hits him with it. Yeah. And that's all it yeah, did. It pretty hard, too. He took yeah. a real wallop from that. Yeah, it, it took a huge hit. So it's like they, they, they pick these cool things, but then they do the lamest route with them which is what makes this movie so frustrating at times for me, because I want to love this movie. The vehicular mayhem in this movie is great. The, yeah, I was going to say the car chase scene was like one of the best like car action sequences maybe ever like that. Like, and there's, there's a few, there. there's a few scenes in this movie where they just go balls to the walls with car chases. And that one being the highlight when she's operating the crane yeah, and, like and it looks, it looks great. The only time that that scene looks terrible is when Arnold is holding on to the crane and she's like slamming him through the buildings and he looks very CGI there. Other than that, yeah. it looks great and it holds it's still up a great. Really cool sequence though, even with the CGI. Um, yeah, and I like the, stunts the are so cool. Yeah, the stunts are great. And I like the way that it's like there's, there's a lot of tension to it. In the fact that like he's driving the car, like his one his car door is gone. She's in the back just getting thrown around. Also hilarious that at the end of that car chase, when they let her out, she's got nary a scratch on her. Like that yeah. woman would be so dead. <laughs> yeah. At the very least, that. many critical wound head wounds from being yeah. thrown around. But no, I, I mean, I, lo I love that car chase scene. Yeah, yeah. it, it, it kind of reminds me of the one from Raiders of the Lost Ark a little bit. Like, obviously, that's like. A really high bar i wouldn't say it like clears that necessarily but the idea of him like trying to like climb his way to the front of like the caravan of the car chase and getting on the thing and you know like taking the doors off and hitting people like you know it's like it's kind of that same vibe so i really enjoyed that part probably the most out of the whole movie it, that the the action scenes especially hold up and help us get through a lot of the lesser you know more frustrating moments of this movie that leave me uh you know wanting a bit more i will say one that does work for me and you know we i know we talk about this a lot and we always complain when movies do callbacks to other movies uh but i liked i liked the distortion of the second movie where arnold comes back and this time he's going in to get the the clothes again but it's a strip club but for women it's a strip club yeah yeah, yeah. And uh, and he gets the clothes from them, and then when he goes to put the the sunglasses on, it's instead like the the star, like something like Elton John would wear. I hated it so much, dude. <laughs> I hated it so much. I got that got good me. good that he like put them down and crushed them. I was yeah, no, no. I if yeah, if he had kept them on for like the one beat was just enough for me. Where if it went any longer than that, I would be I would also then be in that camp where it's like, all right, that's enough of that. Yeah, and the stripper tells him to talk to the hands. <laughs> yeah, and he just like leans into the hand. He's like, now. <laughs> it's so stupid. And then he does it. He says it to the cashier later yeah. when he's like raiding the convenience store. What are so you going to pay if you're for that all that? Clerk, by the way, you just I, let him go, right? If yeah, that absolutely. Guy tells you to talk to the hand. I'm like, yeah. all right, yeah, sounds good, man. Have a good Dude. one. <laughs> If someone the size of Arnold Schwarzenegger walked in, like I would not. No, I'd be like, that's a that's a write off. I'll take the I'll take the hit on that. Yeah, you know what? It looks good on you anyway. You have it. <laughs> I'd be like, dude, you want the keys of the store? Like, uh, I'll sign this over to you right now. Yeah, this is all. It's like very obviously like has like a kidnapped woman in the trunk of his car. Yeah, the trunk of his car with him. I don't want any of that heat, dude. <laughs> like... I want I want zero part of that. Um. How did you feel about Catherine Brewster? Uh, I thought she, I thought Claire Danes was like one of the highlights, honestly. Like I thought she was pretty good in this. Like she definitely played like the action part of it really well. You know, like she, she was good with the guns and like, I, like I, she was believable to me as somebody who would become like a leader in like this resistance thing. Uh, the, the John Connor, not so much. <laughs> he was a little, uh, he was a little rough. I didn't think that he really like. He was probably my most disappointing part. Was the guy who played John Connor. Yeah, well, I feel like the problem, like I don't mind where John starts in this movie, 
because it makes sense that he would feel like this loss because, you know, the Terminator was kind of like his father figure and had to go away. And then he loses his mother. So he feels like he's adrift and ju he's just waiting for the other shoe to drop. But the problem is that by the end of this movie, he doesn't really like grow or learn or change. He just kind of is like, oh, hey, yeah, that's right. We were sent here to make sure we survive. And then he just answers the call and he's like, who's the leader? And he's like, uh, I am. And it's like, OK, like I feel like throughout this movie, he could have kind of grown into more ownership. Yeah, I mean, if this is where if this is the part of John Connor's life that you're making a movie about, he kind of has to, right? But, like, I just, I don't even know that they should have made this part, like, they shouldn't have made a movie about this part of his life. Like, I don't, like, they could have just skipped this. This feels like this whole movie is, like, nah, but people need to understand that Judgment Day still happened after T2, you know? Like, they need to get it. And it's like, I could just get that if you just, like, started the movie as if it happened. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, like, the opening scene could have been, like, Judgment Day still happening, even though they stopped it, or, or thought yeah, they or, stopped it. Or it happened, like, five years ago, and I'd be like, oh, okay, cool, it happened. They didn't stop it, got it. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like... And we pick up with John Connor, like, post- I guess maybe they, they felt like that might be too jarring of a change. Like they're like, we I still guess. have to, I don't know. It just felt like the, the whole movie though. Like there wasn't really anything to like, there wasn't nearly as much drama to sink your teeth into as there is in the first two. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, well this one, one again, because especially like with the second one, it's building on what the first one did. Whereas this one feels like they were like, they, let's just make the second one again. But the ending will just be that Judgment Day happens. And they're yeah, like, I, yeah, kind of. But like, I'm just saying more like the first two actually have like humanity and like heart to them. You know what I mean? Like, like I care about Sarah Connor in the first Terminator movie. I care about John Connor in the in, in T2. Like him having the relationship with the Terminator is like a cool driving force to be going on. This one all is like very flat compared to all that. Like, like I don't give a shit about John Connor or any of his relationships. It if feel, it, sense. No, it does make sense because this movie feels like they were just rushing to the finish line. There, you know, it was we need to get them to the point that they survive Judgment Day, and we're putting and that's that's all this is. Yeah, and I mean, there was like a lot of like really shallow um, like twists that I think were kind of meant to try and keep it a little interesting like that's his wife you know like oh whoa no way they don't even like each other <laughs> like, yeah no they can't be yeah. or like when the terminator is like i'm the one who killed you you know it's like okay cool but like you're reprogrammed now it doesn't really matter that you're the one who killed him you know what i mean yeah. like well that whole like, section that all to do with the movie where he's like i command you to do what i say and he's like you didn't send me back she did it's like oh well, you got me wow yeah it's like what so is like i don't know it's like it definitely has like the bones of a good action movie or maybe like the not the bones like the flash but it's missing like the kind of like really fundamental stuff that really get me to buy in i guess it's, it's missing the emotionality of what the second one did so well was bridge really great action scenes with a story that you can resonate with and yeah, yeah. in this movie like, it's more we're just going to make an action movie we don't have so much of that pathos and it's you're just going to be a fun ride yeah absolutely like the way i could put it is in t2 i want them to stop skynet not just because it's going to like save the future of humanity but just so like john connor and his mom can have a normal relationship again you know what i mean like i think i just like i'm dying for it for those small reasons too whereas in this one i'm like yeah the whole world's gonna blow up okay whatever fine like it's whatever when really that like by the... this is over soon right like yeah when really what you want people to be feeling by the end of this is that you're happy john Car connor survived and he's got you know this woman that's going to go on to be his wife and the resistance with him by his side and you don't feel that cathartic release at the end of this movie you're just kind of like oh yeah they, they survived in the bunker okay yeah yeah because like they also like they fail miserably <laughs> like nothing about those two people at the end of i'm like well i guess claire dean's kind of like had the physicality of the part down but nothing about the way they were making decisions was i like oh yeah these we're in great hands <laughs> you know <laughs> like yeah, well exactly because they don't they don't do much throughout this movie and like you can still have that ending where like 
they fail and the the thing is that they have to survive but you could still show moments where it's like oh yeah these are going to be people that will want leading the resistance all they really do in this is they get out of dodge after the the funeral chase and then they're like we got to go warn my dad and then she shoots like one flying robot out of the sky and they're like and that's all they've done then they just fly to the bunker and survive yeah, I do like that the dad tricked them, though. I thought that was a pretty cool... Yeah, no, I like I that. I like that ending. I like that build-up that they think they're going there to, you know, firmly destroy Skynet again, and it just ends up being that, like, nope, you were just sent here so that you guys can survive the fallout of what's coming. Yeah. That was cool. That yeah, one of the few... It was, it was uh, interesting, at least. Yeah, one of the few, you know, surprises that they sprinkle in this movie that actually, you know, lands. Yeah, agreed. But yeah, so I don't know, like, what else What else is there to say about this movie? I'm trying to think, because, oh, wait, there is something else to say. Okay. We gotta talk time travel, bro. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, you got your, you gotta put your tinfoil hat on. On what is maybe the most classic time travel science fiction story ever. Yeah. So, like... I have no idea how the time travel works in this movie. Like, they send people back, and I guess they have, like, an effect on the future, but also the future is, like, you can't avoid it. Like, it's just always going to happen. So, I don't know. Like, I don't I don't understand it. It's I much more confusing than the Planet of the Apes one. Like, because the like there's the no Apes fate. was really cooking. Yeah, and they build up in the second one, too, that there's, like, there's no fate but what we make. But at the same time, if yeah. John Connor didn't send his dad back in time, he never would have been born. So, like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, it's just like, none of it makes any sense. It yeah. falls apart, like, within 10 seconds. There's no real, like, scientific logic behind any of it, right? No, absolutely no, no logic. Not even close to Planet of the Apes. So instead, what I want to ask you is, Okay. Does Skynet's plan make any sense, like ever, in any of these movies? <laughs> like, no. wouldn't it be so much easier to just kill them in the future when there's like no humans left and you're like the dominant species on the planet? Yeah, and especially like every time we see the war and the sprinkled scenes, like in one and two and three in the future, it doesn't look like even even if the humans were were you know like giving you enough of a fight back. World doesn't look that great. I don't think there's an end game where the humans are winning in this. So what do you need to send them back in time for to yeah. kill John? Like the the world and looks like, awful. It's it's a it's you... a sea of skulls that they're like living in. Like, right, it... right. It's like a wasteland. Yeah. yeah. And like if Skynet is inevitable, why doesn't Skynet realize that John Connor is inevitable? You know what I mean? Like why does he keep trying? Uh, I guess he didn't factor that into his programming. Yeah, stupid computers. Yeah, stupid Skynet. Yeah, Dumb although idiot. this movie kind of makes it seem like the humans eventually win, but then it was like, if they win, how is Skynet sending anybody back? I don't understand anymore. Yeah, I don't know. And especially if, like, they're destined, you know, to do, like, the way this seems is that, like, the time is, is like a circle because it's like he sends his dad back so that it ensures that he's born. So it's like, if they're, I don't even know. I can't. Exactly. I'm hurting my Terminator I'm, time travel like makes the least sense out of any of these. I'm hurting my brain trying to figure yeah. it out. We've already thought like way more. We've thought way harder about it than they ever did. <laughs> yeah, than they. The, <laughs> that is for sure. If anything, they should be sending Skynet into the future to make sure they're still there. Yeah, I right. Think. I don't know. Just like maybe just shoot some like laser cannons at them, you know? Like that Terminator could terminate people in the future just as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Or if like you can do that, like if you fought a battle in the future and saw where John Connor was in that battle, why not send the Terminator back like three days and like hide him there to do a sneak attack? Like we know John I, Connor I know. will be right here. I don't know. Like, or, or like why not just go back to like the 1700s and kill his like great 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 grandmother you know what i mean like jim, jim problem jim. fucking solved and like jim, nobody's stopping the terminator back then you better be careful hollywood may be listening right now and, <laughs> and you know you they would jump at the opportunity to do that imagine like they 
we must kill Goody Connor. <laughs> So it's like stupid. it's like 1800s California gold rush and like the, yeah. his his great grandparents have just like shown up dude you're doing it there that's the movie that's the movie it's like back oh, to the future 3 it, meets terminator 5 it's terminator 5 <laughs> oh no i hope how they're listening right now aren't they they've already got a script no they're definitely not listening <laughs> all right well then jim i'm booking our plane tickets to la right now we got a boardroom to go pitch in yeah but no, like, so, like, I don't know. It just, like, it falls apart, like, at every turn. So, like, you just, you can't even dig into it the way we did with you movies can't. like Planet of the Apes. Because Planet of the Apes, it's, like, a huge central part of the plot is, like, how it works, you know? Yeah, sure. It is, dude. <laughs> you don't end up you with keep, Abraham Lincoln you keep, unless you there's, like, on a to serious that wormhole situation, okay? Fair, fair. All right, I, I, I'll give you that one. How does, um... How does Arnold hold up for you in this one? You think he still got it? Yeah, I think he still got it. I think he's like, I don't know. It's like they're giving him a lot less to work with in this one, but he the action's still really cool, you know. So I I think he did his his part. And he's what still no, yeah, I still. I mean, I'm I'll always be an Arnold apologist, even when you know some of his movies aren't at the top of the chain. Uh, so what was that what was that movie he made like in like 2008 where he was like the sheriff? The Last Stand? Yeah, The Last Stand. That's the one. Classic. That's a classic right there. I remember how hyped we were for that because he was finally coming back to uh to film full time. We were like, let's go, baby. Yeah, he was done uh, in, with his stint as Gov. Yeah, so I'll, I'll always be down for, for Arnold Schwarzenegger. So he, he he definitely, he helps make this movie, uh you know, enjoyable because I, I can watch him, you know, do anything and I'll, I'll enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, but this is, like I said, this a lot of frustrating scenes in this movie because I feel like with with enough tinkering and, you know, uh, a few more rounds with the script, this could have been a great movie. But yeah, I mean, like the idea, like the premise is still good and it makes a lot of sense that they're trying to kill like lieutenants too. Yeah, like um, the bones or that. Yeah, that's something we haven't touched on. The fact that that this Terminator now is killing other people besides John. She She's taken out, you know, other people in the resistance. Yeah. And it goes to what you're saying, too. Like, if you focus on trying to, like, help those people and save those people, then maybe I'm watching John Kerner, Connor turn into, like, a leader of those people. You know what I mean? And that's really yeah. kind of what the movie's about. <laughs> like, yeah, because they set up that great, like, that's a great subplot that, you know, the Terminator now is is axing out other people that are going to be important to the resistance. And that should be how John finally steps into this role is he's protecting a bunch of these people on this hit list during this time right. and gets and them to this bunker. You're sticking with the classic Terminator thing of where like you're creating the future by sending people back into the past. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah, it's interesting. So like the bone, the bones are there. I, it's, it's just a shame that they went with the more prototypical chin than really diving into what was the most interesting aspect of this movie yeah because that would have been a movie i would i that would have been that would have been right there i would have been on that but at the end of the day yeah, it's, no, it's still it's still an enjoyable movie i didn't i i enjoyed watching this movie it didn't kill me i wish there was more to chew on as far as you know thematic elements there but as far as a you know a vehicular insanity action movie, it it's solid. And especially yeah, it knowing delivered. it delivered yeah. on like the big like flashy stuff. Yeah, and especially knowing what we are going to be getting from further Terminator sequels, this is a fucking yeah, classic. Which, <laughs> I I don't I sort of know the subtitles for some of them. I don't know what order they're in. So, but I'm not gonna name any after Salvation, but I do want to ask you: Which do you like better, Terminator Three: Rise of the Machines or Terminator Salvation? Um, I would have to rewatch Salvation again because I don't uh, think I've watched that since we watched it in theaters. Same. All of all of these Terminator sequels, I watched. They were one and done. I watched them when we saw them in theaters, and then I never touched them again. Um. Gun to my head, though, I think I I think I'd go with this one, Rise of the Machines. Well, I see. I need to rewatch uh, Salvation too because I kind of agree with you, but I feel like maybe I'm I'm underselling Salvation because that's got Thanks. Christian Bale. Yeah. And then what's that I guy's I... name from Star Trek? The guy who like got hit by the car. 
hit by Anton, the car. like Yelchin or something. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Anton Yelchin's in that. I forgot about that. Yeah, he plays Reese. <laughs> he's Reese, and uh, and Sam Worthington is the uh, the half man, half Terminator. Yeah, so there's like there's some like big names in it, so I feel like I kind of want to go back and rewatch Jim. it. But I also think Jim. I'm still leaning toward Terminator Three. I'll give you three guesses as to who the director of Terminator Salvation is. Is it McG? It's fucking McG, baby. <laughs> no way. <laughs> That's so awesome. Man. That's so that's so great. I take nope. it back. There's no way it's any good. I'm definitely taking Terminator 3. I just Damn. realized that as you were talking about it, I'm like, dude, I'm pretty sure McG directed Terminator 3. That's Salvation. amazing. I'm so happy right now that we're because that's an episode we'll have coming up. I know yep. I saw that with you. Yeah, yeah, we saw that. We saw that. I think we saw like the midnight show uh, midnight show. I think we were still doing those. Uh yeah, hilarious. That so you, you get your McG finally. We, we were we were wondering. He's McG, right there in the pocket. Which is just like I don't know if anybody's gotten more bites of the apple than McG. Like, <laughs> how did he ever come back from Charlie's Angels full throttle, man? I, I just don't, don't get it. That a- that apple is just a core right now, and they're still letting yeah, it stuck right, on it. Exactly. I can't wait to look at his IMDb, man, because there's so much on there, and there's so many where I'd be like, "Yeah, that's that's it. That's the final nail in the coffin." And then they're like, "Oh, by the way, he directed the Terminator 4. It's like, "What? Like he can't keep getting away with it." Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, all right. So that'll be an interesting one. But yeah, I'm leaning toward the third one. But I'm gonna go watch Salvation like soon. I think. I'll have to dive back in on Salvation, but I, I'd go Terminator 3. And then uh, uh, Genesis and Dark Fate are both steaming piles of dog shit. I never saw either of them, and I probably will not see Yeah, do yourself a favor and don't. If you're thinking of seeing those movies, don't. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I think uh, I'm ready to go on to our next segment here, Jim. Yeah, so let's go to IMDb. We're going to look at the director again. Um, a man by the name of Jonathan Mosto. Tao? Mostow? Mostow. Sure. Mostow. We'll go with. Uh, this is actually like not the worst time to be deep dive because it's pretty short. <laughs> We've been running into people with like hundreds and hundreds of hundreds credits. Of He's got two movies too that I remember really enjoying. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to read through these first couple and I'm going to see if you are familiar with these like at all. Right. Okay. Um, there's Fright Show. Never heard of it. Yeah. It looks like maybe he did like a segment on something in 1982. Uh, 1989, he writes and he gets, he writes the story for and directs Beverly Hills Body Snatchers. What? <laughs> yeah. I've never heard of that one either. Yeah, that sounds uh, like a movie. The TV movie. Uh, his his next writing and directing the like movie. He gets screenplay, story, and directs Breakdown in 1997. Yeah, that's that movie hits, baby. Kurt Russell. I don't think I've ever seen this. Oh, dude, it's yeah, it's so good. It's Kurt Russell. So it's um, it's like him and his wife are like driving cross country. And the car breaks down, um, and like a truck driver stops to like help them by t- like he has to stay with the car. So the truck driver agrees to take the wife to the nearest diner to phone for help, but he just kidnaps her instead. Oh, that's wild! Yeah. So then, like, her Russell has to uh, has to find find him and, and get her back. It's it's so good. Who plays the trucker? I'm watching the trailer as you're telling me about it right now. I'm trying to. Well, see I have no it. idea who plays the. Uh, Kurt Russell is the only person in that movie that I I I know. Everyone else, I I couldn't tell you. JT Walsh, I'll have to watch this. It's an hour oh. and thirty three minutes long. It's yeah, dude, it's long. it's great. It's great. Uh, and then he's got a couple of TV things here, and then this is the other movie I'm assuming you're talking about. In 2000, he directs U five seven one. Yeah, hell yeah, baby. Which I that's another movie. I don't think I've ever seen that. You never watched U five seven one? I don't think so. Oh, dude, you need to watch that movie immediately. Matthew McConaughey, Bill Paxton, Harvey Keitel, John Bon Jovi. Wow, stacked cast. 
You had me until John Bon Jovi, dude. I don't know. I don't know. Dude, it's no, it's 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 a it's a really good movie. I like that movie a lot. Uh all right. So would you take it over term well you it sounds like you five seven one you would take over Terminator three. Well, absolutely. Breakdown as well? Yeah. All right. So then this one might be a bit more of a toss up. Two thousand nine, he directs the Bruce Willis vehicle surrogates. Ooh, thankfully I have not watched that movie. I don't think I've seen this either. No. I, I, I remember I remember trailers for that movie when it was coming out. And even then I was like, Yeah, Bruce, good try. I think my not, my not suckering me into that. Yeah, my homework for the next few months is going to be like catching up on the guy who directed Terminator 3's filmography. That's there you go. Like... Well, well, lucky for you, you only have two movies to watch. <laughs> no, it was more than that. Well, all right, yeah, breakdown and... and... Yeah, you're going to watch Beverly Hills Body Snatchers? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I mean, why not, dude? Why not? <laughs> What's wrong with that? The question is, where can you even find that movie to watch? Uh, that's a good question. I will like, get back to you. Zero <laughs> percent chance that's on anywhere to stream, right? I mean, not like probably not on like Nuke Luke's, you know. <laughs> uh, so all right, 2014, he directs an episode of this is one of those like TNT shows. Okay. Have you heard of The Last Ship? I've heard of it. I never watched it. It's so great, dude. It's like one of the dumbest shows ever. Uh, what's it? One of the, the 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 guy from Grey's Anatomy is like the main guy, right? I think so. I wouldn't say he's the it's guy steamy. from Grey's Anatomy. I remember him from, I'm pretty sure he's in Band of Brothers. That's where I remember him from. Uh, yeah, I think he was on Band of Brothers also. Yeah, it's McSteamy. Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. That was his nickname on uh, Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Um, and then finally, 2017, I've never seen this movie, The Hunter's Prayer, he directs. That sounds very direct to streaming, if I uh, do say so myself. Sam Worthington stars. Of course he does. Sam Worthington, Hunter's Prayer, 2017. He's a, a conflicted hitman helping a young woman avenge the death of her family. God, if I had a nickel for every time I've seen one of those movies. Yeah, is that not just like that movie, The Professional? Is that yeah. not, like oh. that sounds like the exact same movie? Jim, to go one further, this movie written by John Brancato and Michael Ferris, the same the writers of Terminator Three. Whoa, we got it. All right, so I'm adding this to the list for sure. Wow, both of those guys went to Harvard. I mean, you don't just you don't just get up in the morning and write Terminator Three, okay? You gotta you gotta put some work in to get there. Oh, Jim, uh, if I could give you one guess as to what you think those writers followed up Terminator 3 with, what would you say? One guess for what any movie in all of the movies ever made after Terminator 3. They wrote uh, probably one of the most reviled movies of 2004, a comic book movie by the name. Was it Daredevil? No, that came out. Fantastic already... Four. No, no. Uh, Female led. Electra. No, no. Catwoman. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Catwoman. Oh man. And then they also wrote Terminator Salvation. So there you go. Dang. So these guys were like, these guys were really like the go-to writers for if you had like a big budget Hollywood movie. Well, at least in the early two thousands. Yeah, somehow <laughs> they survived through Catwoman. <laughs> Dude, they wrote surrogates also. Wow, so they've just worked with this director a lot. Yeah, they just fucking Jonathan Mostow just loves them. He didn't learn his lesson the first two times. <laughs> I really didn't hate this one though. This one oh, I didn't hate so it either. It's just it's just funny though that he went to the well repeatedly with them. And the, I'm gonna the, hold the judgment until I go watch the Hunter's Prayer. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. all right. You do that, and then you let me know how it is, and I'll consider maybe watching it. I'll let you be the judge there. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, is it streaming anywhere? The Hunter's Prayer. I don't know. It was 2017, so it's it, it's it was either direct to streaming or like one of those last like direct to video movies. Oh, it's on it's on Amazon right now. 
Oh, there you go. There you go. You got to win. All right. He'll be watching that. All right, Jim, I'm curious to see if uh, you're going to give the drop now from our lovely man, Raj, Raj, Raj Ebs. Uh, no, we're going to go drop list today. We're not going to, we're not going to say that it was a bad movie. We're not going to say it was a good movie. It was just kind of like, it was somewhere gonna put him, we're going to put him as somewhere in between. Uh, do you think Raj liked this movie? I am going to say he did not. If you had to take a guess, what do you think Raj gave this movie? I would say yeah. he gave it one star. No, wait, does he do half stars? He doesn't. He right? does do halves. Oh, I'm going to say one and a half. Mm, not too far off. He gave this movie two and a half, actually. Whoa. He called it one long chase and fight punctuated by comic, campy, or simplistic dialogue. Dang. Yeah, Raj, he knows, nailed it in one sentence. Yeah. Wow. He knows, <laughs> he knows how to get right to the heat of things. Just strips away all that other meat right to the bone. Uh, all right, Jim. Yeah. That's why, yeah. That's why he's the goat. All right, Jim. Let's hear it. Final thoughts rating for Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. I mean, I can't I can't follow Roger Ebert's act. He, he, he said everything that you need to say. I give it two and a half stars as well. Two and a half stars as well? Look at you. 2.5 from the Jimbo. Uh, I'm right around there as well. I'll give this movie a three-er. Uh, it's a solid, just, you know, fun, campy movie, like Raj says, uh, that just leaves me frustrated that we could have got what what could have been uh, for this Terminator 3 movie, but not the worst Terminator movie we'll come across. So I'm going to stick with a solid three right there. So with a three from me and a 2.5 from you, Jimbo, good enough to put us at a 5.5. We're going to do battle with some other movies right now. So do you take Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines or do you take Bruce Almighty? Uh, Terminator 3. Uh, you Really? You take Terminator 3 over Bruce Almighty? Actually, yeah, yeah, you're right. That is, I, I'd, I would rather watch that if you put the two of those next to me. I like, I'm probably never going to watch Bruce Almighty ever again. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a chance I'll, there's a pretty good chance I'll watch this movie again. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. You're right. All right, you convinced me on that one. All right, Jim, do we take Terminator Three: Rise of the Machines, or do we take X Men? Uh, Terminator Three. Yeah, I would take Terminator 3 over that, too. You're right. That was it. Once I saw X-Men over Bruce, you were right. I should, Terminator 3 is the top of that because I would much rather watch Terminator 3 than X-Men. Uh, all right. So there you go. So that it ran, we, it's been a while since we had a movie run right up to the top of one of those. So Terminator 3 is going to settle into the 29th position behind The Mummy Returns with a 6 and ahead of X-Men's 5.5. Uh, and I can rest comfortably there. That's a solid spot for that. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, I'm cool with that bad boy like that. Uh, do you have, uh, I know you, you mentioned last week that there were a lot of contenders. So am I going to be taking a guess or do you have one locked in uh, for the, as people that know home, when we get to our round numbers, our tens, our twenties, our thirties, our forties, we get a gym pick right now. We're coming up to a seminal 50 number 50. And Jim, once again, Gets to pick a flick that we missed. Uh, do you have one locked in? I uh, so I've been waffling on these, and like I was pretty locked in until you just said it was the fiftieth one, and then I'm like, man, do I really want to pick this for the fiftieth one? But yeah, I'm yeah, no, do it no. anyway. I'm taking Hollywood Homicide. It is on. <laughs> Hollywood Homicide. Oh Hollywood man, homicide. man, I know there was a lot between. It was between Hollywood, Too Fast, and Ang no, Lee's I'm Hulk. I take it back. I'm picking Too Fast, Too Furious. I take ah. it back. I have to pick Too Fast, Too Furious. For the 50th right. episode, I got to. 50th episode, Too Fast, Too Furious. We're locked in now. Final answer? Yeah, final answer. Final Fans. answer. I, it's All just, right. It's such a tough pick. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it's tough, but I, I think that's a good choice right there. Too Fast, Too Furious is a solid pick right there for our 50th episode. Uh, I do not watch... I, I think the only fast movie I've watched somewhat recently was Tokyo Drift. So uh, <laughs> that's the only one you need to watch. Yeah. No, so, I watched the first one not too long ago. And I remember thinking like, wow, this is so much worse than I remember. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it's so, so dated. I'm interested. I haven't seen too fast, too furious in a while. Yeah, so that's going to be a fun one. I'm ready. I'm ready to dive our first foray 
of many into the Fast and Furious franchise. So that'll be fun. Uh, so make sure you tune in next week when we dive into the first of the Fast and the Furious. Uh, do you have any recommendations for the people this week? What do you got? What are you jamming on? I'm trying to think. I watched like another movie recently. I watched Freddy vs. Jason again, which was a blast from the past. Oh my god, yeah. I can't tell you the last time I watched that movie. But I'm trying to think. I watched something else, but I can't remember what it was, which I guess means it can't be too good. I'm back on the Murder, She Wrote train. Oh, he's back in, baby. Yeah, I'm going through season five the last couple of days. Oh, my God. How many seasons of that, of that show? I is think it? there's like seven, maybe. And so you're, maybe you're getting more there? more than that, too, honestly. I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head. Oh, my God. <laughs> Amazing. What about you? Anything new? Uh, I watched a 80s horror movie. Uh, oh, it was a remake of, I believe, 50s horror movie. I think it was the 50s. Uh, the Blob. Oh, I've heard of that. Uh, hilariously campy. It's so 80s, it hurts. Yeah. And I didn't even realize that the main character is Johnny Drama, which makes it so much funnier. Uh, like Matt Dillon? No, Kevin Dillon, his brother. Kevin Dillon. That's yeah, right. Kevin Dillon. Yeah, he plays the bad boy in town uh, that ends up becoming the hero, and he rises up to save the day oh, man. Uh, once once the blob strikes. And it's it's very silly. It's so silly, but very entertaining at the same time. But like, uh, are they playing it kind of straight? Like, it's oh, they're not, playing it. It's... They're, yeah, they're playing it completely straight. It's just okay. that you... it's not like a, a spoof. No, yeah, no, it's not a spoof. Um. And it's there are some really good practical effects in the movie. the The blob murders people in some pretty inventive and heinous ways. Uh so it lo- it looks really good. And it's it's it, I when I say like very campy, it, it's just like how the eighties was. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It was like that. It was just super campy. Uh but they play it straight. It's it, it was it was very enjoyable. I it was very silly, and I liked it a lot. Um, so especially now that we're in the, the or we should be. By the time this comes out, tailing towards the end of the spooky season, um, so watch uh, watch the Blob if you're feeling if you're if you're looking for a a deep cut horror movie, could yeah, do you could as, do worse. As soon as I get through uh, Jonathan Mostow's filmography, filmography. Right yeah, yeah. you got you got U five seven one to watch first and uh, and break down before you can. I gotta uh, find Beverly Hills Body Snatchers. Probably a great movie for the for the for the spooky season right now. Beverly Hills Body Snatchers. A true, a true classic through and through. So there you go, people. Yeah. Get out, watch those classics, and make sure you join us here next week for our 50th episode where we dive into Too Fast, Too Furious. And as always, we'll see you at the movies.